to another episode of Quarantined Coaches. This time we're at Ohio State University with Coach DeLucia. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for having me. Love the background there. Are you allowed to be in the office, though? I thought we are quarantined at home. What's the rules? Um, this was just a quick stint to grab some things and happen to uh, know that I was going to be recorded here. So. Yeah. Well, the, um, you're supposed to say that's that's your bedroom wall. I think. Right. That yeah. No, I sleep here sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. But I also it was a uh, uh, it was either this or having four screaming little kids running around behind me. So I figured uh, the right. content might be better without that. Yeah, that works. So um, Ohio State, the the logo is attractive, no doubt. The history behind the school is attractive. Uh, I hate Maurice Claret because I'm a Miami. I grew up in Miami. Yeah, um, yep. But aside from those factors, what's the selling point for baseball there, or or for school? You know. Yeah, I mean it's a program that you know dates back to the to the 1800s. So obviously a, a very tenured program, and and obviously you know you can see the even the wall behind me of of great guys um, that have gone through the program. Um, we've had a lot of success as of light and, and are trending uh, upwards. Um, so uh, w one of it is that we've got one of the biggest alumni uh, bases in the entire world, you know, a, a half a million alumni, living alumni right now all over the country. Um, so, you know, when it comes to life after sports, after baseball, you know, it's for us, it's not enough necessarily to just get your degree anymore, right? I think that's a selling point for a lot of schools is, uh, you'll come here and you'll get a great degree. Well, kids these days want to know, what is that degree going to do for, for me? So we go a step further into the job placement world. And, and we say, hey, you know, reality is no matter where you go, you're probably going to get your degree, right? What is that going to do for you? And how can we make sure um, that we are getting you into something whenever that, you know, whenever you're either done with your baseball career or when you, when you do get that degree. So I think that's an initiative that our, our entire athletic department has put forward that I think is unique to anywhere else. Real quick, because I'm thinking about it. Um, do people in Ohio have a distaste for people in South Florida, like the people in South Florida do for Ohio? I mean, you have the national champion, you have stuff, championship stuff, you have the LeBron stuff. I mean, there's a lot of tension between those two states. <laughs> yeah, but he came back. He came back to Ohio and kind of, uh, I don't know, fulfilled what everybody was ultimately looking for. For a while there, he was the villain. He was the villain, I think, to a lot of Ohioans. But then, you know, right, you know, he came back, do what everybody wanted him to do from the beginning. And um, I think he's got a path now for a lot of Ohio. I think, I think it's us from Florida that have more distaste because we're the ones that ended up on the losing end, right? LeBron went back. He won in Cleveland. Maurice Claret got the national championship and you guys stole it because of a stupid flag in the back of the end zone that everybody <laughs> accepted. Any, everybody agrees wasn't pass interference unless you're from Ohio. So anyway, uh, that just get that out so that we can now have a good time the rest of the way. Sure, sure. So that's all off yeah. my chest. <laughs> sure. Sure. One of the interesting things that you told me about your staff was all of you went there, um, all of you played there, all of you graduated from there, all of you got drafted out of Ohio State. Mm -hmm. uh, that that seems different than most places, yes? Uh, I, I'd say so. I'd say it's definitely unique. Um, yeah, all of us, except for, for one, uh, all played here, uh, got drafted, played professionally out of here, and all have our degrees from here. So it's definitely unique, um, especially, you know, when we're talking to recruits and we're talking to them about the academic side and, you know, being out on the mound or being in the batter's box, we've actually gone through that in the very same spots. We've, we've gone through the same classrooms. We've, um, you know, trained in the same places. So I, I think when we're able to speak about that, um, there's true validity to that just because we've gone through it. So de it's definitely unique. I, I can't imagine there's too many, um, too many places out there that, that have that. Uh, and again, that, that's um, a, a big part to our head coach, uh, Greg Beals, who, who put the staff together. 
So I don't want to date anybody there, but how far apart were you guys in graduating classes? Did, did any of you play together? Yes. Actually, our recruiting coordinator, Matt Engel, and I played for three years together. So uh, we're pretty close, know each other very well. And then um, our volunteer, Kirby Pellant, um, I want to say finished up and maybe 11 or 12. And he played with our director of pitching development, Brad Goldberg. Um, so there's definitely um, a couple of us played together. And I think, again, that only helps the relationship uh, and the cohesiveness between our coaching staff and our unit. And I hope people can see that too. We're pretty genuine, uh, but we also, I think our guys see that we're human, right? It's not always this, hey, we're baseball coaches, do what you're told, do what we're telling you to do. They see the relationship side uh, that's kind of outside of the field, which is pretty cool. So does it, are you, are you all very like-minded? I think so. I think uh, the biggest one is competitiveness. You know, we, uh, we're actually uh, trying to figure out ways to, to drive that competitiveness, even when we're in this, you know, quarantine state. Um, you know, for example, we've got a ping pong table in our, our players' lounge, and we are, I mean, constantly competing in that, uh, constantly, you know, we'll golf together, uh, we'll play basketball together. Everything we do, just like, you know, when uh, you know the umpire says play ball, we want our guys to compete. We compete against each other. And again, I think your team, a lot of time, and the culture you build is going to be a product of, of what you're, uh, what you're showing them or what you're doing yourself. So I think our guys see the competitiveness between us, um, and I think it's helping them bring that uh, out onto the field themselves. Is the like-mindedness part of how you grew up in going through the, the, the program at Ohio State? Is that, do you think that's one of the big reasons why you may think alike? I think so. Um, again, you know, it's a, it's a pretty tenured program here, right? Been around for a long time, a uh, pretty, uh, pretty good amount of success just from a program. And when, when, you, when we came in here as players, and I, I'm speaking for the rest of the coaches, but when we came in here as players, there's a high expectation. And I think just being recruited, you knew that coming in and you knew you had to earn everything that you got, that you had to have a good work ethic. And if not, you were going to be exposed pretty quickly. So um, I think we all had that kind of, it, it was innate um, in our nature, maybe before college, but it definitely came to fruition through college and, and coming to Ohio State. And now, you know, obviously that's just transitioned into, you know, the, the working world or, or you know, the, the ability to be able to uh, coach and do what you love on a daily basis. I think we've just taken that competitive drive into what we love on a daily basis. Do you think there could be any disadvantages of that, though? Because, like, one of the things I'm thinking is, isn't diversity good? Different ideas, different cultures, different ways of, of growing up. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and I've thought about that too. And that's where I think, um, you know, what we all try to do and, and what a lot of good coaches do is they just always keep learning. They always want to try to discover new things, see what else is out there. And then, you know, for me having played here and having coached here now for, you know, through seven years, I've spent literally a third of my life at the same Spot at the same university so there's definitely things out there that I haven't seen firsthand right and I think that's where we have to be willing to understand that uh, just because we do it one way doesn't necessarily mean it's the the right way and there's other things that may be out there that we need to explore so I think it's that and you hear it from a ton of other coaches and even on this on this zoom cast or whatever you know the quarantine uh, coaches, Zoom cast. No respect. Is, no respect. Yeah. You don't even know where you are right now. And, <laughs> and my and my link went to your junk mail. Good. Yes. Good. Right. I apologize for that. But um, <laughs> no, I think it's, um, you know, I think that's, uh, that's pretty evident, though, is, is that all the good coaches out there are just uh, constant learners and they're trying to explore and get ideas because, um, you know, and you have like the old school versus the new school and what's right and what's not, uh, what's not right. And, um, I, you know, the balance between them. So 
it's a constant um, discovery process to see what fits and really what what can move your program forward at the end of the day. When a young guy is coming up through the recruiting process, um, obviously you're going to be biased here, but or trying not to be biased, like what should they be looking at in a coaching staff? Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I heard this, uh, again, this, these are all things that I've learned from other people. Um, uh, definitely blessed to be around a bunch of uh, great leaders in my uh, baseball career. But um, I think just being genuine, you know, there's a lot of, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of things out there that are flashy, right? There's, there's these multi-million dollar stadiums. There's a, you know, we've got the biggest Nike contract in the world essentially um there's a lot of these flashy things but i think deep down you need to sense uh the genuineness when you're looking at a coaching staff and uh and the integrity piece do they really mean what they're saying um or are they just throwing out these things for kind of the sales process um that's one thing that helped me because going through the recruiting process for me um I didn't know any better, right? I didn't have anybody that went before me going through the recruiting process. And, and, and again, I'll try to uh, talk to some of these recruits and their parents and, and say, hey, this is probably the first time you've gone through this, right? And, and not always, but a lot of times it's the first time. So it's, at the end of the day, I want to be helpful. I want to be helpful to them and help them through the process and show them that, you know, there is a side, again, the side of us outside of baseball. But more than anything, um, hopefully you can look for the genuineness in those coaches does it does it matter if as a recruit you're attracted to every single coach there because like for example um pitching guys are always excited about who the pitching coach is you know and right. i may hear like right. you know oh, that this coach or that coach like didn't really connect with them but i really like the pitching coach and so right. i'm kind of committing to that like it, is that a bad way or a good way of thinking of it no, yeah, I think um, I think for the most part it is what it is. If you're a pitching recruit, I mean, the pitching coach is who you're going to spend the most time with. You're going to text with, you're going to call with, you're going to be with on a daily basis, right? So um, I think there's some of that, and then some people feel like they need to resonate with the head coach. That's the ultimate decision maker. That's the, uh, the guy that's, you know, at the top that's going to be running the entire program. So I think it's it's – probably unique to every circumstance and individual, but no, I don't think so at all. I think if a guy has a rapport um, for a certain position coach, I think that's, um, that's absolutely, that, that makes sense just because again, that's the person you're going to be spending the most time with. So. Right. It, it, part of me though, when I talk to guys, especially at the level you guys are at, right. Recruiting these days is happening so early and it's just, it's part of the way it is. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but like, let's, again, let's pitching. Um, if I really like a pitching coach and I'm committing as maybe a sophomore in high school, right. you know, don't, don't you have to be really careful about that? Because the pitching, the good pitching coaches or the, the, the really good assistant coaches at your level, aren't they kind of next in line for that head coaching job? And they may very well not be there when you get there. Absolutely. It's something, it's something to, uh, that you have to consider in the process. And again, if, if you're, uh, recruit out there and listen to that it is I mean that's the hard part and with all this evaluating is you know you hear some people that that say you know you want to establish good relationships with the coaching staff or yeah you want to get to, to know the head coach or get to know the school fall in love with the school and the program because the coaching staff may not be there so there, there's a lot to take in um, and I think it's a combination of all of those because like you're saying there's a lot of good assistants that are in line for the next head jobs somewhere else um i think very valid valid points um again i think that goes back to uh at least in our situation you know we're, we're us as coaches here are getting the chance to coach at our alma mater right where we put it all out there the blood sweat and tears and everything like that so again you know i think when we're talking to recruits there may be more of a comfort knowing this is where we want to be this is home to us um but, but again, um, you know, I guess off of us, if you're a recruit considering that, I think you've got you've to look at all those. And at the end of the day, uh, really 
determine what makes sense to you and your family um, from a college decision. Right. And so you guys are obviously, as we've already established, a unique situation where they could probably feel pretty comfortable that it, it, it's, it's a pretty stable situation of coaches. Um, mm -hmm. But again, in most places that, you know, these are not a, a whole group of alumni there. Right. Um, what right. kind of questions, though, could could recruits maybe ask coaching staffs or should they be asking coaching staffs? Because like, OK, you can't ask a guy like, hey, you know, do you do you want to stay here? Do you, is this going to be your job for like, what are they supposed to say? No, I'm trying to get out of here. So like yeah. what kind of questions or things should they be doing to get a sense of, you know, will, will these guys be here? Is this, you know, this group I'm committing to, is this the one that I'm really going to play for? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. It, it's, I think there's, there's a number of different questions. I think, you know, it, it's almost like the flip side of what we're asking guys to a certain extent, because I think you're, you're seeing a, a generation, right? That's um, that's embracing all of the the technology that wants to to know themselves inside and outside. So I think it's more questions beyond the uh, quote unquote X's and O's. You know, what's your spin rate on your fastball, and uh, what's your velocity, and and, and all that. Because uh, at the end of the day, at least what we're looking for, number one, is competitiveness. Competitiveness. Uh, athleticism, work ethic, all of the intangibles, right, that are hard to find. So I think recruits could flip those questions on the coaches and say, hey, wh what are you looking for outside of, you know, my fastball velocity, the, the break on my curveball or slider, or my power from a hitter? What are you looking for um, with the intangibles, I guess? Because at the end of the day, like I said, we're recruiting guys that are very similar to a certain extent. And from the coaching standpoint, we want to see the intangibles. So I think that those are some unique items, topics, what have you, that, that recruits could, uh, I guess, flip the questions and ask coaches on. But that doesn't necessarily give them a sense of if this coaching staff is going to be there long term, does it? Um, Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, those are questions. I right. Mean, so, like, that's the – you hear my kids screaming? There you go. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Making uh, it real. Making that it is real, real life. Um, <laughs> well, again, like, do you think – like, how can you approach that subject? If, like, yes, you're the pitching coach I want to commit to. Like, right. But how can I feel comfortable that you're going to be here if I'm committing as a freshman or a sophomore? Like, right. what do they do? Like, is there anything they could do to figure – you know, feel better about it? This is, this is my personal opinion. This is how I've always been. It's, I'm a very direct communicator, right? So um, I don't try to beat around the bush. I don't try like, if a guy's not working hard, if a guy's not doing what he's supposed to do, I'm going to tell him. I'm going to be pretty, pretty blunt with them. Not, not necessarily down their throat, but I think, I think people need to be more honest with each other, especially in this process where at times there's an influx, or uh, I'm not sure that's the right word, but there's um, the integrity is not always there, I guess. So I think it's fair to be for even players to be direct with coaches and ask that question, ask that question. I mean, we're sitting across from the recruits asking tough questions that we feel that they should be able to answer. And then we're evaluating them on their answers. Right. Um, especially if they've got their parents, I, I would, uh, I would not hesitate to be very direct and ask those questions. Uh, because at the end of the day, right, we all, all of us coaches talk about uh, establishing good relationships with each other and being honest and being able to talk about whatever. And it's like, that's the beginning of a, of a strong relationship right there, just being direct with one another. So I think it's fair um, to ask those questions. And I think it's fair for the coaches to be able to get a, give a real response. So what, in, in your opinion, what what are some characteristics of a good coaching staff um, that that again maybe recruits could look for and families could look for and say you know are those things in place for this group? Um, I think if if uh, recruits want to know the most about their coaching staff, I think the people they have to lean on the most, and I don't know how you go about doing this is the actual players in your program, the current players in your program, and potentially the parents of those players. Those are the people that, you know, have already been 
quote unquote sold on on uh, playing at a certain university, and now they're actually getting to experience that. For me, uh, um, you know, going through the recruiting process way back when, it's uh, it's two. It, a lot of times, it's two totally different things, right? You get sold on one thing, and what you experience is like, well, they told me this, but this isn't necessarily the case. So. Um, for us as coaches, right, we're trying to sell these guys on coming to the university. This is what it is. We, you know, um, here's the scholarship offer you're going to get. Here's the experience you're going to have. If you really want some candid um, responses, those are the people that you should be talking to. And again, when we bring recruits in, we're trying to get them around as many players as they can to hear it directly from from their mouths. Um, but I guess. Um, that's kind of the first part of that. A good coaching staff, I don't know. I, I think it one that I think it's one that does have a cohesive unit that their families get together. You know, outside of baseball, their kids play together. Um, they really they're they're trying to establish good relationships outside of their quote unquote job, right? And outside of that, because I do think that's going to translate to your players, to your thirty five guys that you almost spend more time with than your actual family. So um, for me, it, it, for me, everything, and I've said this before, it, it comes down to relationships and, and things are about uh, establishing good relationships with people. So um, that's what I personally think um, recruits should be looking for. It's in, a, it, okay. it, would, it would be a fair question for a family to ask a group of coaches, do you guys hang out off the field? Sure. Sure. Again, uh, again, I, I don't think, no, I don't say anything, you know, on the table here, but again, it's just uh, trying to think of an analogy. Just if you're trying to establish um, a good rapport with someone, say you're in sales or, you know, and you're trying to get a new client and, and establish good rapport, the best ones are where you can lay your guard down, right? And you can be straight up honest with each other and not have all the fluff in and out. So I think the only way to do that is to be direct and feel free to ask questions like that. So let's pretend it's your kid going up through the recruiting process and, and you're the parent, obviously, and you're taking a look at different programs. Um, one of the things you're gonna evaluate is that coaching staff right? So what might be some red flags about a coaching staff that make you, you know, think again about possibly committing somewhere? Um, yeah, I guess, you know, it's, it's definitely individual. If you're looking at a coaching staff, um, you know, as a recruit, I, I think there could be a number of things. Again, if they're, um, if they're not on the same page with things, if, um, uh, honestly, they, you know, certain personalities may not rub you the right way. I guess if you don't like me um, from from the relationship side, that's obviously going to be a red flag. Um, from the flip side, uh, on coaching, uh, you know, us, I guess, evaluating the players, uh, if we get a chance to talk to them on the phone or face to face, is um, questions that are geared towards maybe taking a, an easy way out of, of something. Um, for example, you know, if you're asking about, well, uh, how many early morning lifts do you have or, um, you know, something that has to do with, you know, being strenuous or pushing guys to get better and them responding or not liking the response uh, to those questions. That's kind of a red flag. Again, uh, I told you some of the bigger things we want are, are competitiveness, athleticism and work ethic. Um, so anything that we get a feeling from those three, and those are higher level, obviously, but those three, I'd say, could be red flags for us. When, you know, I think I know what makes up a good staff. I've asked a lot of coaches, and you talk about it yeah. already. Um, mm -hmm. what, what are some areas that maybe lead to a not very good staff? What, what could be some disconnects you know, among coaches in the clubhouse that would, you know, not be good for the team? Um, yeah, I think you could have, again, it comes back to the cohesiveness and the trust between the staff members. Um, you know, you hear about staff sometimes having, you know, one person that doesn't always agree, right? And, and they could be 
uh, undermining uh, to a certain extent the other coaches because they don't agree or trying to push initiatives or agendas kind of in a roundabout way. So I think, you know, and, and every coaching staff is like this, and I think they're lying to you if they, if they don't agree with this, but not every coaching staff is going to agree with each other, right? Everybody's got different philosophies, ideas that they think about. At the end of the day, when it's time to go out to the field or it's time to, to present the ideas or philosophies or whatever it is in a meeting, um, I think everybody needs to be on the same page. Everybody needs to be on the same page, whether they agree or disagree. Because I think players are, are too smart and will pick up on that stuff immediately. Um, and that shows the disconnect now between the coaching staff, which then resonates to the players. So I, I think that's a big, um, a big thing, being on the same page. Because if you're not, the players will pick up on that really quickly. Should families be concerned about like turnover rates within a staff or is it kind of one of those things there's just a, there's a lot of movement it doesn't necessarily indicate you know something bad is happening. Yeah I think again it's something to consider right and it all depends on your situation what you're looking for. Um, I don't think so. I, I think turnover um, especially with assistant coaches is most likely, and assuming these assistant coaches are going on to bigger, better jobs, what have you, I think it shows the sign of a good culture. Uh, I think it shows sign of good leadership. And because uh, when coaches are coming in and then going out to do bigger and better things, that means there's something within that program. There's a development in that program, um, which again is the product of a good culture where coaches are able to come in um, make a make an influence or an impact um, on the guys they have and then get to go do it potentially with their own program. Um, and then, uh, you know, the coaches bring in another guy uh, that's essentially doing the same thing. So I, I don't, I think it's a good thing, honestly. And um, I think coaches out there should be wanting to bring in people that are those, we talked about it earlier, like uh, constant learners wanting to get better um, you know, that almost want to make uh, or want to create the best versions of themselves, which may lead to going on to bigger and better things to a different program. Coaches, especially at the level you're at, I'm going to get the generic answer if I, whenever I ask, you know, what's the most important thing to coaches, right? Um, the, developing kids and making them good husbands and good fathers. I get right. that. That's part of it. But especially at a program like yours where winning is important um, and, and that's what's expected and that's what keeps jobs, right? Um, mm -hmm. How high up the list is winning? It's up there, right? And I think it's, it's going to be winning is more of the, the product, again, of the culture. But, uh, yeah, I, again, um, um, you know, direct and, and when I say these things is that's how I'm feeding my family right on wins and losses ultimately um, now that's a product that's a product of the culture you're trying to build so that's something that um, if you're not doing that if you're not having success within the program how you wait what are the missing pieces where are we going wrong what can we do to change those and get better to start getting on a better trajectory but absolutely you're right especially at you know, a program like ours winning, um, you know, to the athletic department, to fans, to all of the, um, I guess, all of the influences, it's, it's a big deal. So, um, but again, I can't stress enough, like winning will come with a good culture, with great kids that you're trying to develop um, the right way. What's something you think that, um, maybe a misconception about college baseball coaches um, or something you wish people could learn more about? Um, man, I, I might have been you that said this. I was talking to you the other day. It's, it, you know, recruits see us as like what, Terminator, right? Yeah, that was, that, was, got, me. that was you, right? Yeah. So you, you, you I thought that was, I thought that was great because it's, it's real, especially, you know, we're recruiting guys that we can't really talk to, 
right? So we're walking around these tournaments. We're down in Lake Point or whatever. We're walking around these tournaments. We can't talk to the kids. You can give, maybe maybe give them a nod or something like that. But, yeah, we've got our sunglasses on, our radar guns up, and we essentially look like these big, bad um, – terminator type guys and these are the influencers these are the guys that are uh, potentially going to offer me scholarships and um but again this is where if guys have an opportunity to talk to guys that are already in college at specific programs they're going to be real with you they're going to tell you who is you know coach delicia behind the scenes you know what is he like those are if there's an ability to do that and i think these these talks are great right because um, and you've been, I mean, these are awesome. You've been doing a great job because I think kids get to see the real side of people. They get to see like, again, you've got kids running around. I've got kids running around like relationships mean a lot to me. I'm not just saying that. Um, it, I think things like these are great. If the misconception is that um, we're these big, bad, tough guys, right? And even in the coaching world, like a lot of coaches, are even afraid to reach out or talk to other coaches. What at the end of the day, like I love when other coaches reach out to me and I don't have it all figured out, right? I'm not perfect by any means. I love talking and learning and again, establishing new relationships with guys. So I think it's great they're doing these talks in general, but I think recruits need to also understand like we're people at the end of the day. If you can find ways to, to understand that. And we, we've got kids and families and lives outside of baseball. Um, and maybe creates more of that, uh, of a human element and less Terminator like element to us. <laughs> it is funny. I was just having, right. I was just right. having this conversation with another coach about how just watching like what the perception is. And like we were talking about on the phone the other day and you're like, that's a really good point. I never thought of it that way. But if you sit back and you watch coaches move around tournaments, right, it's like you got your earplugs in, you got your backpack on, you got your Oakleys on, you got your hat on. Yeah. Everybody's whispering. Everybody's like, you know. Right, right, right. That's what your work environment looks like, though. I, I think it's a great analogy. I love it. I, um, I think it's good, for, it's good for coaches to know, too, right? It's yeah. good for coaches to understand. I mean, and they know it. Like, the hard part is, like, we can't talk to these players you know, they got to call us. They got to coordinate things a lot of times through summer coaches or high school co coaches. So it's just, um, it is what it is. But um, I think, uh, uh, you know, for recruits to understand, like we're not necessarily the big, bad, tough guys um, that it maybe looks like when we're, when we're out there evaluating. What about the parents? When the parents come up and they see Ohio State and they're like, oh, you coach at Ohio State and they want to engage. What do they need to know? They, they can't for, I mean, depending on, you know, um, what, what the venue is and all that, but for the most part, they can't. Um, and that's where like respectfully it's, it's tough, but we have to respectfully, you know, tell them, Hey, you know, at events like this, I can't really talk to you, but it's good to see you. Um, okay. But being honest, is it really good to see you or is it one of those things where it's like, you need to understand I'm working right now. Like it, that's got to be in the back yeah. of your mind at times too, right? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And it's just one of those um, kind of awkward scenarios. So yeah, if parents are listening out there, it's just we are. You know, it, it's our job to to sit there and evaluate. And again, it, for me, I don't have a problem engaging someone, but there's also a fine line. Like you try to you try to follow the rules you, you, without telling them, hey, go away. I'm trying to do my job and I'm trying to follow the rules. So uh, I hear you. I think that's a, that's a valid point. Hopefully, you know, parents. I think it'd be good for, for summer coaches to maybe tell their players and parents that beforehand. So they maybe are aware of that. Um, so it, there's not that awkwardness and, and all that. What about when a summer coach comes up to you and tries to tell you who you need to watch on their team? Does that bother you at all? Like Josh Rudd, if Josh Rudd comes up to me yeah. and asks me, uh, yeah, no, no, man, hey I, coach, I, hey coach, I see you're here. Let me uh, go down my lineup with you and tell you who the good people are. Does that ever bother you? And I don't, I, I don't mind that. Again, you know, there's times where I'll be locked in trying to watch a guy, um, and then you know, I'll again, I'm I'm probably more direct than I should be. I said, hey, 
give me a second when we finish this inning let's let's talk so I can sit and evaluate just politely like, stay right here let's watch the rest of this inning and then we'll talk um I don't mind at all uh I think how many of those do you get though when you go out to a tournament how many how many t- how many names are getting thrown at you like you got to see this guy oh yeah a decent amount a <laughs> decent amount and, and a lot of times you know you'll get emails and calls and stuff beforehand but yeah you'll get a decent amount um and you know there's always a a, a friend of a or you know a relative or a brother or sister who went through ohio state and i, I told you we've got a half a million alumni so someone's got to know someone you know uh the six degrees of separation isn't isn't uh too much of a of a separation i guess um but yeah we get those pretty frequently Hey, but but you're out there like it it it's tough because again you're people you're trying to be respectful there's alumni right. there's rules but you're also out there with your list of who you want to see already like yep. like how often are you really going to change what you've been working on for eight months to now see this kid at the last second that somebody walks up to you and tells you about like that's probably not happening most of the time right yeah it's a small percentage I mean a lot of times and this goes probably for a lot of guys you know I got two eyes that. But I can only see so much, right? Even if they're, you know, if I'm trying to watch two games here, there's only so much you can see. So, um, but a lot of your list of guys you want to see, sometimes you'll see players either they're playing against or playing with. Um, that is an advantage there. So, um, but yeah, that, that's the tough part is you do have a, a list of guys, an agenda that you want to do. Um, if you've got downtime or something, maybe you can catch one of those players. Um, but that's also where you have to depend on. I think there's definitely a trust level between, um, you know, coaches and, and um, sorry, college coaches and then coaches that they may have talked to before um, with players and whatnot. I think there's a, there's a trust level that goes into that. too. Coach Belusha, I appreciate you sitting down and giving us some insight. It was refreshing to not talk about spin rates and launch angles and, and all of that stuff. It, it's nice to get a little bit of an inside look into coaching. And, well, you know, it, this is all about just educating. I was, I forget who I was, t- I might have been telling you about this analogy of it's like a boxing ring and parents and travel coaches and high school coaches and college coaches, like everybody's in the different corners and they don't get a chance to, to see what that person's corner looks like. And I think that it's just good for the game the more we can get that kind of stuff out there. I'm, I'm with it. That's why I'm, I'm really glad you're doing these talks just in general. So, um, so high school players get to see things in a different light. And I think if anything, you know, we're, we're in these unprecedented times that, that guys get to see that. And, you know, one thing that, um, that we've been doing within our uh, coaching staff is myself and Brad Goldberg have been interviewing you know, some big leaguers and trying to get content there too, because it even goes, you know, when college guys are in college and they're looking at the big leagues and they want to be the best. Well, you got to recognize they're humans too, right? I mean, there, there's a human element to all of this. So I think it's great perspective um, to give guys and it's awesome what you're doing here. Well, again, I, I appreciate you coming on and it's, it's the first time the entire baseball world has been on the same schedule. So we should take advantage of it. So thank you again. For, for doing this, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot for having me.